Uh, the base combat shotgun is good for staggering zombies. Basically, if you shoot them at a medium distance, it's almost a guaranteed stagger. So you will get a glory kill almost guaranteed. If you shoot them at a close range, it'll obliterate them and people will feel that right away. And then the mods, it, it's hard not to talk about the mods. The sticky bomb is one of the most efficient ways to remove weak points on many enemies. It's like a drug. Yes. actually to do it. It's amazing because the weak points make a like a plink sound when you hit them. So when you get good at, at like lobbing sticky bombs, whether it's the you know the Arachnotron's turret or the, the Mancubus' guns or the Revenant's guns, um, you, you get to this zen point of basically being able to lob it and then look away and hear that pink yeah. sound and and it's just it's it's so thrilling. That is good, again, a really good fodder control weapon that can give you the level of precision in terms of the number of bullets you can put in an enemy to guarantee a falter, uh, a stagger when you really need it. So I use that quite a bit on imps, for example, to stagger them when I need glory kills. The hard scope is a more advanced way to take off weak points where you could quick scope enemies and do it really fast. So the, I kind of think of it like the the sticky bomb is like the entry level weak point removal gun and then the uh, hard scope is more of the advanced one where you could do it from across the arena. And then the micro missiles uh, similarly allow you like a you know rapid fire output of micro missiles that can burn down an enemy uh, pretty quick. I was a micro missile fiend on 2016 and have actually kind of shifted a little bit more to, to favor the, the scope because it is just so effective against weak points. To show you some of the thought that goes into the balance, the micro missiles will not remove weak points. So even if I empty an entire chamber and I have it mastered and it's just a hose of death, you can never take off weak points and you don't ever get a falter. Like they're very hard to falter with micro missiles. So you have full movement with micro missiles and they home but you don't get the falters that you do from other weapons and you can't strip off weak points. And when you remove a weak point, you also get a falter. So a stagger is when they glow. A falter is when they have like a pain reaction. And when they do that, they stop attacking. So a deep meta, especially on Nightmare, that starts to become a big part of players' games is what falters enemies because it basically makes them a non-threat in that moment. Uh, that is basically for shield guys, and, and you could take a shield guy's uh, blue shield and turn it into a bomb. And if you shoot it and break it, it creates this huge AOE blast that'll kill enemies around them. So that's like one of the number one uh, uses for that gun. And then the mod, the microwave mod slows them down. You could lock them down and basically cook them until they explode. Which, now we're talking about like which tool is right for the right enemies. Uh, like the, the uh, Whiplash, for example, yeah, is extremely elusive and very dangerous. So being able to lock her down and basically get her to stop moving is pretty critical, and the Microwave mod is great for that. The Heat Blast mod is just a great crowd control mod. It's, it's, you're going to get a benefit for leaning on the weapon, and then you get a huge, like, basically shotgun blast uh, mid-round. And then when you master it, you actually get a couple seconds of extra power from the weapon. <laughs> Slow moving, but super powerful. Huge amount of self damage. Uh, Lock-ons certainly make killing things like the Prowler or the Whiplash, which are elusive enemy types, extremely uh, it, very useful for those guys. And then the uh, remote detonate, certainly good for crowd control. But it's very much a throwback to the original rocket launcher, like powerful, ammo's hard to come by, ammo capacity is low, and if you try to use it like a rifle and spam it and just run around with it to kill zombies, you're probably gonna get yourself killed. So it's a good example of uh, so much of what we did in Doom Eternal. It's a, it's a thinking person's action game. The Super Shotgun is the most powerful weapon in the game at point blank range. I think I could say that with confidence. That is your, your, your super uppercut, but it's slow and, and you gotta be real close. So you're not gonna be able to just run up to people and uppercut them uh, without any kind of uh, retaliation from the AI. So you wanna set it up with something. And then obviously the meat hook, which I demonstrated, is critical to advanced levels of movement that you'll need, especially on the higher difficulties. You can move it to close distances, uh, expert plays, I'll use it, I'll, I'll switch to that just to uh, meat hook across the arena to chainsaw an enemy, or to get to an enemy really fast just to glory kill them, or to use it to launch me off of an enemy and do all kinds of things. So uh, the, the mobility involved with the meat hook is pretty critical. More effective against flying enemies. Uh, if you go to the codex, it will specify which gun is more effective against who. So one of the mods on the ballista, the arbalist, it's like a charge up bow and arrow shot, a single shot at six to an enemy and then explodes. 
Uh, that will take out a Cacodemon in one shot, so it's really, really effective against flying enemies. Now, the flying enemies have been tuned accordingly that they'll actually dodge a little bit out of the way, depending on uh, who you're fighting with, so you can't just sit there with your reticle on them forever. And then there's the Destroyer Blade, which you charge up and lets out a giant blade throughout the space and pretty much kills anything it touches. But there's a huge risk reward there because your movement is severely limited and it takes a long time to charge up. Overall, though, it's a great combo weapon and another kind of advanced weapon for removing weak points. Yeah, the utility of the chain gun is huge. People don't realize that yet, but they will. The stopping power of the chain gun against the heavy charging, the, the pressure units like the, the Dread Knight and the Hell Knight, uh, and, and, and the Baron is huge. So those enemies are really tough in the game. Like a Dread Knight is like lethal. And to light him up with the micro missiles is pretty effective, you know, but uh, it's not going to slow him down. The mobile turret is, yeah. is the strongest in the game. I mean, you could put out more DPS with that gun than, than, uh, than any other weapon. And then the shield mod for it, it's great. Yeah, yeah it, it just, when, when stuff gets thick at the end of the game and you're just like, dude, I need to kill things and just give me like two seconds with a shield, it's, the, it's, it's awesome. Like, it, I use it all the time. It's really, really powerful. And when you master it, you can, you can uh, dash into guys and, and fall through them. Yeah, super weapons that are balanced for the encounters, and certainly some encounters in late game will be uh, encouraging the player to use them, but we know that the best players don't really want to fire their nuke because that's kind of like you want to take on the challenge without shooting off your nukes. A lot of the super heavies uh, in some cases are resistant to super weapons, uh, and some of, like you could cut down a tyrant with a crucible blade strike, uh, you know, pretty good. If you ever want to go mano a mano with some of our best enemies, it's very useful to shoot the BFG into the air. You'll get rid of all the white belts and you and the black belt can dance. Super fun. If you, if you feel yourself being overwhelmed, it's probably because we, we want you to, to, to launch one of those nukes. So. Or just get good and Go beat them. <laughs> Got it out.